Hello? Okay, let's start this tutorial session. So this tutorial is about the CNI from CNI Zero to CNI Hero, the Kubernetes networking tutorial using CNI. I'm Tomofumi Hayashi and... And I'm Doug Smith. So I'm Tomofumi Hayashi working in the Red Hat and then works for the OpenShift engineering as well as the in upstream CNI and amount of CNI maintainer as well. I joined the network pumping working group as well. And I am Doug Smith. I'm also a member of the network plumbing working group. Uh, Tomo and I both work together on Multis CNI, which is a CNI plugin that allows you to attach multiple network interfaces into pods and Kubernetes. Um, what Tomo didn't mention is that Tomo has also created a number of other CNI plugins, such as ones that you, you may might even take for granted, like a static CNI, um, CNI plugins to override routes. Um, and we've also, I've also created another CNI plugin called Whereabouts, which is for like a dynamic uh, allocation of IP addresses. So today what we're gonna look at first is an intro to CNI. Tomo's gonna walk you through everything about how CNI works. Um, in the end, really, uh, don't, it might feel like a lot, but really, it's, in the end, it's really a few just simple things that you uh, need to take a grasp of. What we will do is we will be very comprehensive here. With that in mind, we're also gonna walk you through configurations and all of the details and how you can actually configure CNI. Tomo's then going to take a glance over how you're going to develop CNI plugins if you have an interest in that. And as Tomo kind of noted uh, originally, is there are a number of slides that we have as reference material in the slides to download that uh, we decided were maybe too much detail, but they could be really useful for you when you go there. Um, with that all in place, since you've got the basics, we're going to do a hands-on tutorial um, where uh, you can follow along if you'd like. Download the deck. There's a link to a um, GitHub repository that's got configurations for kind and all of the resources that are used in there. Um, there's also kind of a bit of a troubleshooting aspect to that, and then I'll kind of um, touch on that. And last but not least, we'll kind of show you how you can get linked up with the CNI community and where all the resources are. Um, with that being said, I will let Tomo um, kick it off with an intro into CNI. Thank you, Doug. So let's cover the, what the CNI is first. Important stuff, right? So, what the CNI does for you is, maybe the simply to say, in case of the Kubernetes, CNI provides the network connectivity to your Kubernetes pod. So if you're launching the, uh, some simple pod, at that time, the, if you're typing the IPA, I mean the IP address command with the Linux, then you can see the uh, loopback and the if there is added, right? So that is CNI plugin does. I mean that, uh, loopback address and the ether there, Ethernet uh, interface is created and they put your network namespace of the port. I'm described out the network namespace later. And then in addition, of course, ether zero have IPv4 or some case in your deployment have the IPv6 address as well. So this IP assignment is also does, uh, by, is done by a CNI. And then of course, if some network provider do uh, some specific additional configuration such as the NF table, IP table rules, or interface MTU changes, this seems to be that in the uh, by a CNI plugin as well. So when the uh, pod is added, this stuff is done by CNI. And then of course, you know, they open the door and then close the door. So if pod is tearing down, at that time, that CNI plugin is removing this IP address and then also the interface and then try to the next usage. So here is the uh, rough picture about rough diagram of the Kubernetes deployment in the worker node. Worker node have the kubelet and the container runtime. 
like the uh, cryo or container D, and inside the cryo container D, libcni code is in. So libcni code is from the uh, CNI uh, GitHub repository. And then we have the uh, pods. So today, we'd like to describe that the CNI config and the CNI binary, so that these stuff is a target to describe. But before that, let's go to focus on the pod. So the pod is not container, you know. So based on the Kubernetes document, the pod is a shared context of pod. It's a set of the Linux namespace, secret of potentially other fact, first set of the isolation. So, Linux namespace is the partitioning feature in the Linux kernel. So this is used for their container or some stuff. So their container uses the Linux namespace such as the PID or mount and the SOM and then isolate the uh, resources from the container host side. And then container is a little bit different from the uh, pod. So pod is not just a container. This Pod could have a multiple container inside the one pod object. So this means the multiple PID and namespace, and then also the multiple mount namespace is in the pod. But regarding the network, multiple net container sharing the one network namespace, that is a little bit unique than the usual container, Docker or apartment and so on. So this uh, CNI is invoked at the uh, mainly two types, I mean the pod creation and the pod deletions. So that this, uh, you know, the, you already know about that. The CNI is the plugin architecture. So each CNI uh, make implementation is provided as the plugins. So CNI project under the CNCF provides the uh, several plugins as the reference implementations, Mac VRAM, IP VRAM, and then also the host local IP management, and the third party, I mean that the several vendor plug, uh, provides the CNI plugin as the Calico, Slim, Open Kubernetes, and so on. So, so the when the, uh, so how CNI plugin is used when the uh, pod is created? So this picture is showing that the uh, this stuff, system flow. So the, okay, let's imagine you create, uh, you do the uh, cube cutter create pod. Then this uh, pod object is, goes to the uh, API and then the uh, kubelet recognize this uh, pod object. And after that, kubelet sending the uh, RAM pond sandbox gRPC call uh, through the CN CRI content runtime interface. Content runtime is recognize this stuff and then try to start the uh, pod sandbox, which means the uh, several PID name, Linux namespace, and of course the network namespace as well. And after that, container runtime call uh, libcni to create the uh, interface. libcni reads the uh, config from the uh, cni config directory. So mainly the, uh, this seems to be the etcni netd. Then using this config, libcni invokes the CNI plugin. CNI plugin gets the these informations given by the libcni side, then creating the network interface. So that's the uh, whole picture of the how CNI plugin is invoked. So let's focus on the CNI config side. So first things, CNI config is a text JSON file, not the YAML file. So yeah, of course, the, uh, if you are good at the uh, Kubernetes, everything is written in the YAML, and then you may thinking why CNI using the uh, YAML, JSON, not the YAML file. So this is the slightly kind of the historical point of uh, how they have. I mean that the CNI is not under the Kubernetes. I mean that the CNI is just the uh, uh, separate project. So this means they are officially Kubernetes, the, how do they? CNI is pretty independent of the Kubernetes, and then Kubernetes uses the CNI, this stuff. So that, that's the stuff. So, so they are, yeah, unfortunately, CNI config is a JSON text file. And then this file name should be end with conf list, like the 0 01 fuba conf list. So sometimes the, if you're looking in the old implementations deployment, at that time, they, you may, file, uh, you may find the 01fuba.conf. 
But in this presentation, I'd like to focus on the conf list because the conf is a little bit old, and then this is deprecated at the latest CNI version. So, so that this, uh, so in, if you're putting in your multiple uh, CNI config in the uh, CNI directory, but the container D and the cryo takes only one file from config directory. So that this stuff is choose by the first file by sorted ASCII uh, code. So yeah, you need to keep in mind, ASCII is slightly different from the alphabet or some stuff, right? So keep in mind. So CNI provides the CNI config as a part of the CNI specification. So CNI specification means the, uh, this contains the uh, uh, how CNI plugin should works, including the config file format and also the other result, other formats such as the uh, result object format. So the CNI up, a community upgrade uh, this specification periodically, so from 0102, 0203, 01, and 040, and then now the 1.0 is the latest. This is released at the uh, 2021, likely three years old. So this is pretty almost the same syntax, but a little bit different among the versions. So maybe that if you uh, have a trouble, you need to keep in mind, sometimes the, your version does not uh, fit the configuration style. But so that this presentation focusing the 1.0.0 as the latest, you know, latest is good. So that is the uh, simple configuration uh, CNI configuration example. So this, you know, the JSON allows us to the uh, higher cloud structure nested object. So here is the the parent uh, structure has the uh, CNI version name plugin, and inside the plugins, we have the uh, another object. So the uh, this stuff is the uh, showing the uh, CNI configuration has the higher cloud structure. So this configuration is mainly uh, for three types of the configuration. One is this config for CNI runtime, which is the uh, libcni. And then next is the config for container run runtime, for example, the cryo container D. And then next is the config for CNI plugins. Based on the, uh, this, config uh, this sample configuration, the first three line is mainly for the uh, config for CNI runtime. CNI version specifying which CNI spec version is used for this CNI config. And then the name is the uh, config name, config identifier for a libcni. And the plugins contains the, uh, each plugin specific configurations. So plugins means, of course, the plural. So this may have a two or more plugin configurations. I will explain that a bit later. So let's, let's go inside the plugins field. We have the type master IPAM. So type is a generic uh, configuration term in the uh, CNI config, which specify uh, which CNI plugin is used. So this field value, I, in this case IPVLAN, is literally should match in CNI plugins directory's binary name. So this means the IP VLAN, type IP VLAN means IP VLAN plugins used. So that is the uh, common configuration value, uh, types and the value. And the master is the uh, IP VLAN specific configuration parameter. So if you're using the other uh, CNN plugin, at that time, the uh, different parameter needs to be configured. So, so the, uh, please take a look into that uh, for each CNI plugin in the document. The IPAM section is slightly different. I mean that the uh, IPAM is also have a nested. I mean that the IPAM contains the different CNI plugin configurations. So in this case, host local CNI is used to IPAM. IP, the IPAM means the IP address management. So, so the IP VLAN plugin creating uh, IP address and on the interface only without IP address and then host local assigned uh, IP address. So this is a delegation of the uh, CNI. So when 
libcna is executing the cna plugin at that time of course the program plugin in this case consuming the input and then do the output so this picture is showing that input and output so when the ipv run or some other cna plugin is executed at that time two types of the input is consumed one is the environment variables, which is, the, of course, Unix uh, systems, the environment variables standard uh, STDM, which contains the uh, several informations. One most important thing is a command, CNI and back command, which contains the, uh, what the plugin should do. So if the uh, CNI command indicates the add, so this is the uh, uh, IPv LAN plugin should create the IP uh, the interface, and if IPv LAN is uh, called with CNI command Dell, then IPv LAN plugin will removing the interface. And then the, another CNI container ID, CNI FNM, CNI ERB. So that this stuff is the uh, uh, power port based parameters is provided at the environment variables. And then next is a standard input. Standard it contains the uh, real your CNI config, which if you uh, provides the HCNI netty 00 list, then the, this file contents is goes to the standard input. And then IPv run will do a job for you. And then after that, IP plugin output, there are three types of the information. One is how it goes, exit code. Exit code, zero means success, and then if something is failed, then this calls the non-zero uh, value is added. And also, the, to, for a further troubleshooting, plugin could add the several error message at the STD error. This STD error is uh, captured by the kubelet and the content runtime, I mean, that the upper component, and then you can see uh, these uh, error message through journal cut or some stuff. And if uh, this plugin succeeded, at that time that this result is in the uh, standard output. So this is the, uh, contains the interface name, IP address, and the MAC address, and, and then other information. So here is a sample of the, uh, this stuff. So that this output calls the CNI result object. So this is same as the config and the JSON format. And then you need to uh, keep in mind that the CNI version is provided. As I told before, so this CNI version specifying the uh, output uh, types. So the different CNI version may contain the different uh, name and value for interface. So by the way, the, uh, this result object contains the uh, interfaces and IPs. So the so CNI spec allows to return the multiple interface. In the IPs field, the interface zero means the uh, we, this IP address assigned to index zero of the interface. So in this case, the ESO zero have the uh, uh, 10.1.1.3. So that's the uh, result object. So this result object is uh, retrieved by the container runtime side, and then at the result, Kubelet captured these information through the uh, CRI, the port sandbox status messages. So that the uh, simple case, and then next is a little bit complicated case, the plugin chain. As I talked before, plugins means not the plugin. Multiple plugin can be added in this field. So in this case, I, we have the two CNI configurations. One is IPv run, and then next is the tuning. So, so the, uh, the first thing is, what does it mean? So let me explain that. So, so the libcni execute the uh, first CNI like the, as the uh, IPv run is executed first. IPv run uh, plugin will create in the interface and IP address is assigned. And after that, second CNI is executed with these information, previous, uh, previously created the interface, in this case, the ESA0. Then, so in this case, the uh, first IPv host hostroute is create, execute and then create the ESA0 in the pod. Then after that tuning, do the, uh, some additional configuration to the uh, ESA0. 
in this configuration, the syscuttle is uh, executed for the, this ether interface to changing the several attributes of the uh, interface, such as the uh, uh, socket option max con plus op filter. So how these, how these plugins are executed? So this picture is explaining about how to do that. So of course, as I thought, plugin chains is the first CNI is executed, and then next, second CNI is executed. This is not a parallel. So first CNI call is the pretty same as I explained before, but the second CNI call is slightly different. This means the, in the standard input, CNI config is uh, dynamically changed by the libcni, injecting previous uh, output, which means the IP VLAN output is goes to the prev result field of the CNI config, and then tuning CNI consuming the uh, HCNI netty the config plus previous result, then identifying the which interface is the target to configure. For example, this, the left side is the uh, CNI config in disk, and the right side of, is the uh, just uh, dynamically captured uh, about the uh, uh, CNI config consumed by the tuning side. As I mentioned, the right side, the red uh, rectangle, prep result is dynamically added, and then this contains the uh, result object which is generated by the IP VLAN. In this case, the interface ESA0 is found. So the tuning plugin can consume these parameters and then he know, uh, they, it knows which interface should be target for this configuration. And then that's the, uh, the CNI config menu, but uh, we, I need to also explain about the capability and the runtime config. This is also the feature of the CNI config. And then if you may see previously uh, your experiment, you can see the uh, several annotations in the port site, like the uh, Kubernetes IO slash ingress bandwidth, as well as the egress bandwidth. So of course this annotation is specifying the uh, bandwidth of the ingress and egress. So this means that this should touching with interface, right? So how to do that? This is, of course, done by the CNI. How to do that is the, uh, what the capability and the runtime config is required. This runtime config capability field, uh, feature is uh, used to uh, container runtime, also the upper layer component, I mean that in this case the kubelets, to inject the additional Purport specific uh, parameters to CNI plugins. So, in Calico or Frontend or several implementations, uses the feature. For example, the uh, bandwidth or port map plugin is used for that. So, let's see the uh, one example. This is the Calico's deployment, the uh, CNI config. At that time, the, uh, as I thought, plugin have a three, or oh, not two, three CNI is executed. So first is the Calico, and then Calico will create an interface, and then also the assigned IP address, and the next is the port map, and then bandwidth. For each uh, port map and the bandwidth plugin is doing for each jobs. And then at that time, there are, you can see the capabilities port mapping through in the port map side, and the type, the capability bandwidth through is in the bandwidth side. So that is the also the, uh, CNI's features. So, so if Kubernetes, if you creating the port with several bandwidth annotations, Kubelet inject this parameter is the runtime config, and then libcni is invoked. libcni identifying the these runtime config parameters and then also the config file side capabilities, then inject the appropriate runtime config in based on their capabilities. So for example, bandwidth capability case, right side of the configuration is they are just a capture the CNI config just before bandwidth is executed. At that time, we can see first 
prep result contains the uh, generated interface information. Then after that, runtime config, bandwidth, ingress rate, ingress, ingress burst, ingress rate, ingress burst. So these additional parameters are dynamically injected based on the uh, port uh, annotations. So this capability runtime config feature is, uh, yeah, unfortunately this is not in the uh, CNI specification, but the uh, kind of the optional document conventions.md contains the, this stuff. So that's the uh, configuration. I, I've covered the almost CNI config. So the, uh, from the C, uh, CNI plugin's perspective, CNI plugin gets the uh, standard environment and the CNI config, then creating the interface or some CNI chaining. Some plugin may changing the some attribute or some stuff. And then CNI plugin will output as the JSON object as the CNI result, and the if failed error code is happen, as well as the error message. So that's the uh, configuration, and then let's go to the develop CNI plugin side. I mean, at the, so previous talks is about the how to use, and then here is the how to create the uh, CNI plugins. As I talked before, CNI plugin input the standard environment, CNI config, this is pretty same as the last slide, right? So to creating CNI, you just satisfy the this requirement, which means your CNI plugin first, parse standard environment values and the CNI config, then these, inform these parameters satisfy the, uh, uh, enough to create the, your C uh, interface to the pod. So this, your plugin creating the plugin uh, interface by Linux uh, Netlink API and so on. Then after that, you gathered the interface information then just output the CNI result as the JSON. So this is, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's simple to say, but of course it's hard, you know? <laughs> so, but so that simply to say, you just do this stuff. That's, that's the whole. But so the, in addition, you need to care about the several stuff. So the first is the uh, how to integrate the Kubernetes. I mean that if CNI, your CNI plugin wants to get the uh, pod object. At that time, as I told before, uh, CNI is not integrated with the Kubernetes. So CNI plugin does not have a way to access uh, Kubernetes object. So for each CNI plugin, you need to get the create a service account or other way to create the, some API account to get touch the Kubernetes API object. And also, the, you need to keep in update the, this service account for uh, certifications uh, expires. And then next is the uh, uh, CNI have a little bit unique uh, behavior, have the uh, command there, I mean, the, when their port is deleted. So in the CNI specification mentions, their command should not return error, even though plugin have the, uh, some error. So, so this means the, uh, the first, the, uh, if the Dell is failed for uh, some uh, dead rock or some certain stuff, but the, this, in this case, the, the uh, CNI plugin side, they, it should not return any error messages and then also the error return code. Otherwise, currently the uh, container runtime is designed that the Dell command should not return error, so that this means the uh, unacceptable uh, it's happened, container runtime is getting the mat. And also the nation based on this stuff, sometimes CN uh, from the up, upper layer side, container runtime, libcni may invoke uh, multiple command del to one pod object. Okay, let's imagine the, uh, from the uh, CNI plugin side, libcni invoked the uh, command del multiple times to the same object. So first, command del will s remove the interface successfully and then re just the return succeeded. But the next invocation side, sometimes from the generic programming point of view, 
this may return the error, hey, the part is no longer exist. But uh, this should not happen because, as I told before, the commander does not return an error. So that's the, uh, uh, you need to keep in mind. And then the another thing is about the CNI version. As I told before, CNI version uh, is um, in CNI config as well as the CNI result. And then, as I told, the, for each version, CNI result is the right we change it. So here is the uh, three re CNI result object based on the uh, CNI version, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 1, 0, 0. And then interesting thing is, is the, uh, so this information mentions the same IP address and interface information. So this means, so 0, 2, 0 has the IP4 and the IP6 field is required. But on the other side, the 0, 4, 0 is IP's, IPS field is in. And then next is the version is removed. So for each version, the out expected output is slightly different. So the from if you're writing down the CNI plugin, you need to care about the, these version differences. So, so this is uh, seems to be slightly complicated, but that is required. CNI plugin should parsing the standard environment config, then you're you're creating the interface and the output you should output the CNI result based on the CNI version. So, okay, let's go to the hands-on from Doug. Go ahead. All right, Tomo, thank you very much. Um, so at this particular link, there is everything that I'm going to do in this tutorial. And here's the thing. There might be a lot of detail in what Tomo just covered, which is extremely comprehensive. But in order to go and do what we're going to do at the command line, there's really only two things that you need, which is a kind cluster. So that's Kubernetes in Docker, um, which is a real easy way to try out Kubernetes, to have a development workflow, etc., and how to use the kubectl command. There's no special magic, rocket science, or anything else. So what we're gonna do in this particular tutorial, which is kind of um, rapid pace um, to, uh, to keep it rolling, but what we're gonna wind up doing is two things primarily. We're gonna install a CNI plugin into a cluster. I'm going to use Flannel, which is a way that provides pod to pod connectivity. So, you know, Tomo explained what does a CNI plugin do? Well, it creates interfaces and gives you a way to get connectivity to a network. So, we're going to do that. And it was also kind of convenient that in this particular scenario, Flannel didn't install perfectly cleanly. So, we get an opportunity to see how to debug that. Um, so that's the first part of it. And then the second part of it is we're going to create a custom CNI plugin that's created with Bash. It's, you don't need really any special programming language knowledge for it. It just uses some basic Linux prim primitives, as Tomo mentioned. Like, it has to read environment variables, and it has to read some data from standard in. Um, so it's just, you know, a couple dozen lines at max, and it's just one that's uh, what we call the dummy plugin um, that logs some data so that you can kind of see, hey, what variables and values came into this CNI plugin, write it to disk, and then we output some uh, kind of like fake information about it. So that being said, I'll move on to the demo. Yeah, thank you, Tomo. All right, cool. So the gist here is we've got these three panes. On the left-hand side, what you're looking at is just some like general commands where I'm going to use like a kubectl create and stuff like that. And then on the right is as if you were debugging a host. So it's Kubernetes and Docker. So like debugging the host is really doing like a Docker exec. So that's where I'm going to put those commands. And then on the very bottom is really just a like kubectl watch um, to check out what pods are there. Uh, all of these 
files and everything that's created are part of the GitHub repo that was in the link. And uh, I, as a first step, create uh, the kind cluster. Um, in this case, it's already created um, so that we don't have to wait for it. And the main thing to really pay attention to in this config is that we disabled the default CNI. So typically on a kind cluster, this would already be bootstrapped for you, but to kind of emulate what would happen on a like vanilla cluster. Um, so when the cluster comes up, we go and look at the pods that are there and we see that there's a couple pods that are pending and it's because the nodes are not ready. So when I do kubectl um, get nodes, those are not ready. So that is based on CNI. Uh, so what I'm gonna do to see why that is the case is to exec um, into this Docker container, like we're on the host, and I'm gonna look in the Etsy CNI net D which is the CNI configuration folder. There's nothing there, and having the presence of a CNI configuration in that folder acts as a semaphore to mark that the nodes are ready. So the kubelet knows, oh hey, your network's ready if there's a CNI config there. So I'm gonna install flannel, which I did on the left. It's with the kubectl create, and we can see the flannel pods come up at the bottom, um, but it doesn't actually fix everything. We see, the con we see the CNI config on the right, there it is, but those core DNS pods are still in a uh, container creating state. So even though it says, kubectl get node says those are ready, um, it might not actually be ready. So we gotta figure out what it is. So it's, in this case, you can do a, uh, um, kubectl describe pod, and we're gonna get Kubernetes events. Those were propagated from the kubelet to the Kubernetes API to your kubectl command so that we can see what's going on. So I take this and I go to describe the pod. Tell me you can fast forward once. Thanks. Yeah, so we have here a error which is failed to find the plugin bridge in the path. So that's what happened. It got propagated back up to this, these events in the pod. And we can fix this since we know where things are thanks to Tomo's directions about, hey, um, you have a CNI config, and you have a directory, and you have a CNI binary directory. So I go and list the um, CNI binaries, and there's no bridge plug in there, so that explains why we get this complaint that it was failed to find the bridge plugin. So there's a number of reference CNI plugins that are available from the CNI community, and Flannel happens to use one of them, which is the bridge plugin. Not all CNI plugins work this way. Flannel uses what we call a delegation pattern, where it kind of delegates some work to the, to the bridge plugin. So what I will do here is go and install the um, bridge plugin, so I've got a uh, reference CNI plugin YAML. Uh, Tomo, you can fast forward once. Um, we see those CNI plugins daemon set comes up. And then on the right here, I list the plugins, and now we've got a bunch of them, including the bridge plugin. So because of that, now those core DNS pods down at the bottom are running. So we've fixed the issue that's there. Now that we've got a working cluster with a CNI plugin that will let our pods come up. Let's go and customize it. And what we're going to do to customize it is we are going to create a, uh, we're gonna create our own CNI plugin. The first thing that I do here is I am going to 
write a quote unquote binary onto disk. So it's called the CNI binder because usually you would have compiled applications here. But in this case, I am actually going to just make this bash script that you see, you see here, which really just does a couple things. Uh, what it does is it has a logging function, it logs in environment variables, it reads standard in, and then it outputs a phony response. We just kind of make something up here, and you'll be able to see that the Kubernetes reacts to it. Um, and yeah, that's our kind of phony information that we give. We just set a static IP, and in order to configure this CNI plugin to run, we will have to make a configuration for it. So what we will do here is we're gonna, in the CNI configuration directory, is, so we can do one fast forward here. And one more, oh, thank you, yep. Oh, I have to uh, make sure that bash script is executable or it won't get executed and we need that CNI config. So as Tomo mentioned, in your CNI config directory, the um, ASCII-bedically first config file is used. So I can leave the flannel configuration there, but I just add an additional one that's prepended. So 00 ASCII-bedically comes before 10. We'll say we want it to be type dummy because that's the name of the binary, quote unquote on disk. Now that that's all set up, I'm gonna spin up a pod because that's when our CNI plugin is gonna execute, right? So on pod creation, on pod deletion, CNI is exercised. So we'll create the, create the pod and it comes up down there on the bottom. And since this uh, um, pod executes um, on the host and it writes a file, I can go ahead and just cat this log file which has the information here. So you could take this from the demo, execute it, and you can see all of those environment variables. So you could use that to build a richer plugin that actually did something. Something you're gonna see here down on the bottom, on the third row in the IP column, is the dummy IP address that we output. So we output some JSON that said, hey, this resulted in an IP address of 192.0.2.22, um, but that's actually just a big fat lie that we told the kubelet, it was just totally fake. So what you're gonna see if you were to actually execute into the pod is uh, the, the reality of what happened. So cube API thinks that's the IP address, but when we go and uh, do a uh, uh, cube cuddle exec and issue the IPA command that would list our uh, IP interfaces, et cetera, we actually don't have another interface there. We just have the default loopback that you get and no actual IP address. Um, so let's see how this looks differently if we use Flannel instead, right? So Flannel is gonna actually create an ETH0 and actually give you connectivity. Um, so I go ahead and I delete this pod and once I delete that pod, then I remove my dummy configuration. So, Tomo, you can fast forward once. Yep, thank you. One more. Thanks. All right, so I remove that configuration, then I'm gonna spin up the pod again, and on the next execution, Flannel is gonna be executed, and now we can see down there at the bottom with the sample pod, IP address 10.244.1.5, which is actually true, and we will check it out this time by executing into the pod and saying IPA, and we actually do have an ETH0 now, and that IP address matches what's in the 
Kubernetes API. So that's kind of the magic, quote unquote, of how that actual IP address uh, ends up there when you do uh, kubectl uh, exec or uh, get pod. So um, I highly encourage you to uh, give it a shot on on your own and run through the steps and it's kind of a like template that you could use to uh, like flesh out an actual um, application. Tomo, thank you very much. All right, so a few kind of uh, tips and tricks for debugging um, CNI plugin. So if you have something going on in your cluster that is related to CNI, like I did during the tutorial, when you do kubectl um, describe pod, there's a high likelihood that you're going to get Kubernetes events that came up so you can check out what's going on. Once you have some information there, then you can kind of dig into where these CNI assets actually live on your host, which will be in your CNI binder and your CNI confter. So those, that's where you're gonna find all those goodies. One thing that I have certainly seen happen uh, before is that you make some change related to CNI, you install another CNI plugin, let's say it writes a configuration and that configuration does not actually wind up alphabetically first before your other configuration. So you're like, why isn't this operating the way that I thought? So check that CNI confter, that may be what's going on. Um, definitely the first place to check out. Another thing to remember is that the type field is a required field in the CNI configuration and it's not like some kind of magic that like uh, is not representative of something. It is the name of the binary in your binder. So if you don't have that exactly right and that binary doesn't exist, it is going to fail. So this is just an example of like fat fingering it or having a hard to read typo in there that's not exact. So that's one of those things and one of the main things that happens all the time, just like the demo, is that you have some dependency that like wasn't apparent um, in your configuration that the CNI plugin asks for, hey, I wanted to use a delegation to this other plugin, and it wasn't there, so you actually had to install something else. Um, so that's kind of the most, the most common one. Um, and last but not least, it's not always apparent that the readiness state of your nodes is totally a CNI thing. So if you're you have nodes that are in a not ready state, definitely check out what's going on in your um, CNI confter because that is just a marker. And it's only so much information for the cluster. Like this is, as Tomo mentioned in one slide is, CNI kind of predates Kubernetes. CNI was intended to work for a bunch of different container orchestration engines and we live in a world where Kubernetes is really the king of container orchestration engines. I had junior guy on my team who I was saying, I'm like, hey, well, CNI is container orchestration engine agnostic. And he said, what's a container orchestration engine? And this is somebody who worked on Kubernetes every day. Well, I realized that his entire career was just working on Kubernetes. So, um, there's a little bit of a disconnect in uh, some of these places and this was just one thing that was kind of taken like, hey, how do we figure out if the network is actually ready? So the decision was made to use that config file just as a semaphore. So if you're writing a CNI plugin yourself, you might want to have considerations about when you write that CNI configuration onto your host 
to mark that that is ready. So Tomo and I work on OpenShift, and we, in the OpenShift land, we like to have a like really opinionated way about how your cluster is gonna be lifecycle managed. So we have a really delicate dance about how and when the CNI configuration gets run on disk. So there's really a bunch of like checks in the background to be like, oh hey, is your actual network really ready? Um, before we write that on um, that config. So like what happened with flannel here um, wouldn't happen in that situation because we're kind of checking for stuff like that before we mark the nodes as ready. Um, last but not least, there is of course plenty of community surrounding CNI and it's really some of the strengths of CNI I think are the like community ecosystem behind it. Um, first thing you should know where it is, is the cni.dev site, which is a kind of pretty print of all of the documentation for CNI. So it's just all rendered HTML that looks nice as an easy to go place where you can find all of the parameters for all of these uh, community developed CNI plugins. And so in, T in Tomo's examples, we had, there's lots and lots of parameters there. There's really only three or four of those parameters that are required for every plugin. And then each plugin is gonna have its own set of, uh, of parameters that you'd use. So you can check out cni.dev, you can kind of um, pick and choose like a fast food menu of the parameters that you like and mix those up and kind of make your own CNI meal from them. Further from that, the like, that is generated from the documentation. If you wanna get into the guts of it, you can go right into the um, github.com slash container networking, which is the CNI community. That's the, the namespace where everything happens. And there's really two repositories to be aware of, one of which is CNI. And CNI includes a number of things. It has libraries, it has debug tools, it has um, probably even a couple um, small plugins, maybe like, um, there's actually a plugin called Dummy that will just create a dummy interface, stuff like that. Um, but the most important thing I think that's there is these two markdown files called spec.md and conventions.md. When you bring up the spec the first time, um, it's sort of like drinking from a fire hose. You're like, wow, there's a lot of stuff here. But I'm hopeful that after coming to this particular talk, you have enough of the jargon terminology to be able to go through it. Because I think once you understand that the basics are really basic, like it's environment variables, it's standard in, you output JSON, you exit with an exit code. It's, you have a lot of kind of creativity between those two things and it really does seem like, wow, there's a lot of stuff here. And it also can be since it has that history of um, kind of predating Kubernetes, it's a different API and I think that sometimes people that are really accustomed to Kubernetes take a look at it and they're like, wow, that is more than I bargained for but it's not that hard um, to get in there. And once you start kind of picking it apart and making your own customizations, um, the specification itself um, shouldn't be as uh, hard to read and is a really good, uh, good reference. Um, there's also the plugins themselves, which is a bunch of community maintained plugins that do a bunch of uh, kind of utility type of functions. So say you want to connect to a bridge to have your networking through a bridge, that's one way. Um, Tomo used the IPv LAN, which is a sort of like net network virtualization. Tomo's using that as an example. Very handy, Mac VLAN similarly. So check those out. There's a few different ways to also do IP address management there too, like DHCP or static IP addresses. Um, and last, Lastly, um, there is also a CNI community update and Tomo 
And Casey Calandrello will be presenting this tomorrow at 2 p.m. So um, go check it out, and you're going to see um, some of the latest and greatest from the CNI community. And thank you a bunch. I appreciate you taking the time um, to check out this tutorial. Any question is overcome. Uh, you were in a few places quite explicitly referring to Linux, but I understand that the same applies to Kubernetes on Windows. The same CNI is there. So I'm basically looking for you know, this type of uh, uh, mm, tutorial, but relating to Windows. Uh, there are some corner cases which are different, like you know, referring to Linux, Paths on Windows, finding the places, and that's you know kind of creating problems when you have to deal with it by yourself. Uh, if there are any documentation on that, that would be interesting. Um, that's a that's a great question. I believe all of the basics should still apply, and um, uh, I so one I'm. I'm not super familiar with um, uh, with running Kubernetes on Windows. However, there is, for example, in the CNI plugins, the community maintained plugins, there is a build script for those in Windows, um, and there are Windows maintainers that are definitely uh, considering what's happening with CNI. I would guess it's probably similar where you're going to have to, like, um, Tomo, if you, let's say you had a Kubernetes system that you just inherited and you're trying to figure out where your binder is and where your confter is, would you look at your kubelet config to figure out where that is? Yeah, I think so. So the first time, the difference of the um, Windows and the Linux is network stack is the different. So, so from the uh, CNI reference uh, directory, I mean that the, uh, so CNI github.com have the plugins repository. Inside the uh, plugins, we have the Mac, as I told before, Mac VLAN, IP VLAN, this stuff is, exist. But uh, this is, so several stuff is, of course, built for Windows as well, but the Sun, CNN plugin is only for uh, Linux. As far as I remember, the Mac VLAN and IP VLAN seems to be only for the Linux. So the first thing is they are from the CNI perspective. Supported plugin is uh, different. Windows have the more limited, and the Linux seems to be uh, full features. And then in addition, the how to invoking this stuff is uh, slightly depends on the Kubernetes uh, uh, side of the Windows. So, so the, uh, as far as I know, the, uh, yeah, the Kubelet cares to invoking, or, or actually, I'm not sure that the uh, GRPC for Windows side, but uh, yeah, the Kubelet sending the GRPC call and then the container runtime of a Windows container care about to invoke the uh, CNI. So maybe the, uh, of course, the journal cutoff is not exist in the Windows, so maybe the, uh, similar mechanisms is uh, exist in the Windows, so you can capture this stuff by the Windows manner. One thing I would say to try is, it, if you're brave enough, is to try to look at the contents of the tutorial and go try to find where your CNI binary directory and where your CNI configuration directory is in your um, lab Windows cluster and try running through the same steps, because I kind of think that if you know where those two directories are, it should mostly apply. Um, you might have to convert the script into a uh, PowerShell or something like that, um, but check your kubelet configuration on your Windows cluster to find those paths, and I think that it should be pretty similar.
Thanks for asking. Yes, please. Um, just a quick question. You mentioned CNI runs only on creation and deletion. I see you have a plugin for DHCP. Or do you handle stuff like uh, lease renewal and stuff that happen during the lifetime of the container? Okay, so thank you for the uh, questions. So the, uh, uh, so the, yeah, as you mentioned, the DHCP have a different protocol of the CNI. So the, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, the DHCP is the periodically release and the request is happen and then kind of the, uh, heartbeat ish messages. So, the, so in DHCP case, this is only for the DHCP. DH, if you're running, uh, if you're setting up a DHCP uh, CNI, at that time for each worker node launching the DHCP CNI server, which care about the CNI protocol. And the CNI, uh, DHCP CNI plugin is interworking with these demo set to sending to request for the some certain part or release and then this stuff. So this means therefore each uh, release or this command of the DHCP side is care about the uh, DHCP CNI plugin server. So that's why the uh, DHCP is worked very well. Uh, is that answer your question? Yeah, perfectly. Thank you. Okay, cool. So question is welcome about how to create or how about uh, writing down the CNI in the different languages other than the goal or everything is welcome. Call once and call twice. Okay, let's close this talk. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.